ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರಂ ಮುನಿಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶಾತ್ರೀಭಕ್ತಿಗುಣಾರ್ಣವೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯಜಾತರ ಮುನಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಮಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯ ಮೇಲೆ ಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೇಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಅಪಗತ ಮದಮಾನೈರಂತಿಮೋಪಾಯ ನಿಷ್ಠೈರಧಿಗತ ಪರಮಾರ್ಥೈರರ್ಥ ಕಾಮಾನಪೇಕ್ಷೈ ನಿಖಿಲ ಜನ ಸುಹೃದ್ಭಿರ್ನಿರ್ಜಿತ ಕ್ರೋಧ ಲೋಭೈ ವರವರ ಮುನಿ ಭೃತ್ಯೈರಸ್ತು ಮೇ ನಿತ್ಯ ಯೋಗ ಸೊ ವಿ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಕಾಮೆಂಟ್ರಿ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ಇಟ್ ಸೇಸ್ ಶಿಷ್ಯನಾಯ ನಿನ್ನದೆ ಶಿಷ್ಯ ನಿರುಕ್ಕು ಮಿರುಪ್ಪ ನಾಟ್ಟಾರಿಯಾಮೆಯಾದೆ ಅತ್ತ ಅರಿವಿಕ್ಕ ಕಾಹ ವಿಚ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ since the ordinary people will not be understand will not be able to understand how they should behave as a disciple so how a disciple should actually conduct himself is a very important issue that needs to be made known to people at large and who else other than the lord himself to make us know how a disciple or shishya has to behave so in order to teach the people at large how a disciple a model disciple should behave himself how he should conduct himself the lord himself incarnated as both the shishya and acharya or the disciple as well as the preceptor and here swami manohar mamuni gives a very beautiful and important insight into this aspect when he says sadhyantara nivrittyam phala sadana shushrushayam artiyam aadaramam manasoyam udayana irakkeyumahira shishya rakshanatte shishya rakshanam lokattil ullar ariyamayale so all the qualities have been enumerated in the previous class generally they are very difficult to find in this world attai swadushthanattalai arivikke kahavengai so it, there is a beautiful story that once a person who was preaching in a public place he was actually teaching the preaching about the ekadashi mahatmya which is seen in the in several puranas and he was mentioning that <clears throat> on the day of ekadashi one should not consume brinjals because of so many different reasons so it so happened that he, of course on ekarshi nothing should be no food should be consumed that is the main uh, 
ಮುಖ್ಯ ಪಕ್ಷ ಆರ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೌ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರಿಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕೇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ದಟ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟೇಬಲ್ ಫುಡ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಇನ್ ಸೌತ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ವಿ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮ್ ರೈಸ್ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟೇಬಲ್ ಫುಡ್ ಸೊ ರೈಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅವಾಯ್ಡೆಡ್ where as in north india they have what we you know what is known as chapatis or wheat based food so they consider wheat as the staple food so that is avoided so some people consume only fruits some people consume different forms of uh, food and staple food is avoided especially some vegetables like brinjal etc are to be avoided that is what is mentioned in the ekadashi mahatmya and he was waxing eloquent <laughs> to put it in a uh, poetic language that one should avoid the uh, consuming of brinjal on ekadashis so this happened in the morning then after some time one of the disciples happened to visit the house of the person who was giving the discourse and then it so happened that they had prepared a very nice dish <coughs> with brinjal and uh, the scholar was actually consuming it with great enjoyment he was <laughs> relishing it then the disciple asked uh, sir can i ask you a question what is the question you may ask uh, about a few years earlier you have few hours earlier you had actually mentioned in the discourse that on ekadashi day one consume brinjal but now i see that you are consuming brinjal with great relishment then the discourse person the person who gave the discourse said see puranas are there for the person for the purpose of being explained to others and brinjal is there for the sake to be to be eaten so what does this have to do with that <laughs> so that's what he said so brinjal is there to be eaten puranas are there to be taught to others so that is a, that is all i see to it what is wrong in doing that and uh, we see that many doctors in especially in india i don't know in the us in other places when a person who is having the habit of smoking he actually goes to the doctor the doctor says you have to avoid smoking because it will give you a lot of it will uh, precipitate your illness but after a few minutes the doctor himself will go and smoke one or two cigarettes so they don't accept the precept of practice what you preach or preach what you practice so that should not be the case so that is why the supreme lord he actually attai swanushthanattare arivikya kaha vengai so unless a perform person practices what he preaches or preaches what he practices then only it will be valuable otherwise it's of no use upadeshattale arivikyumalavil swotkarsham tedikkullavandanin ittanayendre ninakkavum koodum that is why when a person is preaching something many people think that he is just preaching he is not practicing what he is preaching if that is the case then that preaching or that upadesha or that instruction will have no value whatsoever with regard with regard to the persons who are in the business therefore anushthanattare ari vikkamalavil namakku ide venum endru vishwasithu parigrahikkikki udala irukkum ire there is a very beautiful saying in sanskrit which says paropadesha samaye saparashara swanushthana samaye munayo api pandita when a person has to give some instruction to somebody he thinks that he himself is equal to the said vyasa or said parashara 
who was the father of Vyasa. But when it comes to practicing what he has preached, many a times even highly evolved souls are found wanting. That is what he said. So many a times my Acharya used to say, even the preachers mention about this also, but they themselves, once again, people like me, for example, you may, keep, you may take it. Even though we mention it, once again, we don't realize that we have to preach or practice what we preach. It's a very, very, very difficult situation. Because many a times we say, we see doctors advising others not to get angry. But they themselves get angry at the, at the drop of a hat. <laughs> so here it is said that if a person just preaches and does not practice, people will not value him. They may have some respect for him, but real value comes only when a person preaches what he practices or what he practices what he preaches. So to do that, the Lord incarnated as the Supreme Law, as the as a Shishya. <clears throat> and then we proceed to the next sutra. Before that, we read the Avatarika or the introduction. Ippadi shishya nai nindre im mantra shikshai panni Iv vadiyare jnanam pirakkumo tu pirakkame nuvo Jnanikkale hallyangira padiye sakala shastrangalam Jnana sadhana maya no irippadi Ivattai abhyasitni av vadiyare jnanam pirandado vinna Shastra jnanya jnanatikkum in mantra jnanya jnanatikkum undana visheshatai Drishta antamaha varudichai hirar sakala shastrangalam yandrutudangi very wonderful explanation is given by Swami Manavada Babi. He says, many a times in the Indian context, when a new work or new treatise is introduced to the people at large, the question is raised, do we really need this work? Or is the purpose that is being served by this work already taken care of by some other work that has been authored previously. In other sense, what is the uniqueness of the work which makes people want to read it? This has to be mentioned in the beginning. So in this context also the question is raised to generate the knowledge of the Supreme Lord, to acquire knowledge of the Supreme Lord, we already have the Shastras, namely the Vedas and the subsidiary aspect, the Vedanta and the Upanishads. And so many, that is Vedanta itself is Upanishad. <coughs> and so many other subsidiary texts like Itihasas, Puranas, and so many other texts, the Smriti works. Even it is said that Itihasa Purana Abhyam Vedam Saupa Brahmaye. And it is also said that Veda Shastra Param Nasti Nadaivam Keshavat Param or Veda Shastra Param Nasti Nadaivam Keshavat Param. There are so many innumerable texts. You have the Vedas, the, then the Vedanta or the Upanishad, then you have the Vedangas, then you have the Itihasas, Ramayana and Mahabharata, huge works. Then you have the Puranas, 18 Puranas, and then the Upa Puranas, then the Smriti works, running into millions of shlokas. And then you have the other Shastras like Nyaya Shastra, Vaisheshik Shastra, which also indirectly talk about God. So, when there are already so many treatises, why one more mantra? So, already the purpose that is to be served by this mantra is taken care of by the Shastras. Why do you require a new method to acquire knowledge of the Supreme Lord? Is the main question. So this question is answered in a very beautiful manner by Pulladoka Acharya who says, Sakala Shastrangadalambra Jnanam Sayamarjitam Pode 
திருமந்திரத்தால் பிறக்கும் ஜானம் பைத்திருக்கதனம் போலே இட்ஸ் பியூட்டிஃபுல் பியூட்டிஃபுல் அனாலஜி தட் இஸ் கிவன் பை சுவாமி பிள்ளைநோத்தாச்சாரியர் விச் சேஸ் சகல சாஸ்திரங்களாலும் பிறக்கும் ஜானம் சுயமார்ஜிதம் போலே there are two ways that a person can acquire money one way is he earns it himself by putting in lot of efforts so we see in the markets especially in india where the pulses vegetables etc are brought from the villages and sold in the cities we see <coughs> the we see many menial workers or laborers they carry very very heavy sacks on their back probably they work from morning till evening without any break or a very short break so they actually have to put in so much of physical efforts to earn a small amount of money and then we also have software engineers and engineers doctors and there are so many people who put in lot of efforts to earn money so in sanskrit there are two terms which is known as swaya swayam arjitam and pitra arjitam they call it as swaya arjita also but swayam arjitam swayam arjitam swayam arjitam or swayam arjitam also so one way of acquiring money or wealth is to put in continuous efforts mental and physical efforts to earn money another method of earning money it's not earning actually but you actually get the money is you inherit the property from your forefathers either from your parents or from your grandparents many a times we see that grandparents don't will all their property to their direct children but they do it for the grandchildren due to so many problems so inherited money is known as pitrarjita or that was actually arjita earned by his father or grandfather or some somebody belonging to the earlier generations so if he has to uh, get that money what he has to do he should, he need not do anything he has to just accept the money and spend it wisely and earn happiness if he spends it in a very bad manner for bad things then he will lose that also that is why in a wonderful incident of vedanta deshika's life we see that so there is there is a very beautiful instance which is mentioned in the context of vedanta deshika's life so vedanta deshika was the best scholar among his contemporaries of course we call him the best scholar all time great we call him an all time great with regard to all the communities whether it is advaita community or dvaita community or vishishta dvaita community that's a different thing but as far as shri vaishnava philosophy is concerned there is nobody to question him or challenge him because he has written such a huge body of literature which is extremely profound and deep and scholarly and all the other uh, good qualities to you would associate with these things <clears throat> so once he was invited through a messenger by the local king who said that please come to my king uh, my palace or uh, my darbar as they would call it my court so that i can honor you so at that time swami vedanta deshika wrote five verses which is known as vairagya panchaka extremely beautiful verses <clears throat> which is i will not direct that that's a big it will take two or three hours to explain the uh, profoundness and greatness i will just mention what is relevant to this context he said shoni kona dashamsha palana kala durvara garvana jwala dala mahendra chatu vachana dhanyan namanyam 
దేవం సేవితుమేవ నిశ్చినుమహి యోసౌ దయాడు స్ఫుర ధానాముష్టి ముచే కుచేరమునై దత్తే స్మ విత్తేష్ ప్రైజెస్ వీ డోంట్ కేర్ ఫర్ దీస్ సో కాల్డ్ కింగ్స్ హూ ఆర్ టెంపరీ కస్టోడియన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఎ స్మాల్ పీస్ ఆఫ్ మెడ్ on the other hand we would like to worship the supreme lord of the lords who accepted a small offering of bounded the avalokhi puff trace puff trace by sudhamar kuchera as he is known in some parts of india and gave everything that he wanted to kuchera so it's a very beautiful verse that he has explained that needs to be explained in detail but ultimately he said nasti pitra arjitam kinchit na maya kinchit arjitam asti me hasti shaira agre vastu paitam aham he said i have not i aren't even one paisa paisa is the unit of indian currency and did my father earn anything he also has not earned anything until now so i have not inherited any any money or any property from my father neither have i earned any money from any quarters any means but i have a huge treasure which i have inherited from my grandfather and his earlier predecessors and what is that it is the lord varadaraja who resides in the hastigiri army on the hill of the of kanchi puram known as hasti so that is known as pitrarjita or pitamaharjita rajya so here he says sakala shastrangalam pirakkam gnanam swayamarjitam pole of course the use of all the shastras the purpose of all the shastras is to acquire the knowledge of the supreme lord narayana but that knowledge that is acquired by means of the shastras is like a person <coughs> working in the markets doing menial jobs and actually sweating from morning to evening huffing and puffing and then acquiring some money so acquiring knowledge from the shastras is like that whereas tirumantratinal pirakkum gnanam swayamarjita paitrika dhanam pole so the knowledge that is acquired by the chanting and the siddhi of tirumantra is like accepting acquiring and accepting on holds on holds inherited property so what should one do to inherit uh, enjoy the inherited property all he has to do it is he has to be born in that family which is not in his hands of course but even if he is born in that family he has to take some small steps to inherit the property and then enjoy it what else he has to do? and then so i'm going to only quotes a very beautiful verse he says shastra gnanam bahu klesham buddhesh chalana karanam upadeshadharim buddhva viramet sarva karmasu shastra gnanam bahu klesham to acquire the knowledge of the shastras itself is a huge task a very difficult task and many a times buddhehe chalana karanam many a times rather than helping the person attain profound and na perfect knowledge many a times it misleads the person therefore upadesha dharim buddhva viramet sarva karma so it is best to acquire the knowledge of hari by means of upadesha of the acharya that is through ashtakshara mahamantra daya mantra etc and then give up all things in life this is very well 
depicted in an instance of Swami Parashara Bhattar, which is often quoted. So Swami Parashara Bhattar used to have regular, give regular discourses in Sri Rangam. And it is a very interesting and very enjoyable story, like the story I narrated earlier some time back. So when the when he used to give discourses, a person who has a great, great scholar, he had studied all the Shastras and he had profound knowledge in all the Shastras. He used to pass by and whenever he used to pass by, he used to, it is the code of conduct rather that when somebody elder is seen when we are passing by through some road or something like that. These are all possible probably in villages, etc. Of course, this is not possible in cities, so people may find it a little bit strange. Because even in even today in city, in what we call the Divya Deshas, we see when we are passing through the road, some Sri Vaishnava will be sitting. So we have to, it is our duty to prostrate before him, pay and pay our respects and go. And many times still this is invoked in several places. So that great scholar when he used to just come inside the house and uh, <coughs> inquire about the wellness of Swami Parashara Bhattar and say prostrate and say Namaskaram or something like that. And then Swami Parashara Bhattar would also respond in a very casual manner and said, oh, are you fine or something like that. And then he would continue his discourses. So, and this, similarly, after some time, a very, very ordinary person used to, so who used to look very ordinary rather, <coughs> he, he was also having all the treatment and other things, all those things. He was also endowed with the Shivaishtha Vrakshinas. <coughs> but he was not a very, he was not supposed to be very scholarly or anything like that. <clears throat> but a very devout person. So he used to come there and uh, he used to come to the place to pay, pay respects to Parashara Bhattar and Swami Parashara Bhattar would stop the discourse. Then he would prostrate to him and then make him sit next to him and converse with him for a few minutes. And then once again he would prostrate to him. Thank you very much for coming. We are blessed. He would say like that and then he would send him. So all the <coughs> disciples had a question. When the great scholar who has studied all the Shastra, he is such an accomplished scholar. When he comes to the discourse, our Acharya and MD Swami Parashara Bhattar, <coughs> he is a little bit indifferent towards him. Whereas when this person who resembles a, a beggar means not some ordinary beggar, but there are some uh, evolved beggars also whom we call Dasaya in Sanskrit. That means they are actually taken the Diksha of begging, which is prevalent in uh, India. I don't know uh, how to actually exactly mention that. So this person is like that beggar. And when he comes, our Acharya stops his discourse and he prostrates before him, makes him sit, sit, sit next to him, then inquire about his wellness for a few minutes and then he will once again prostrate to him and send him. So what is this? Either he should treat both of them equally or uh, logically speaking, he should give more respect to his scholar rather than this person who has not read any Shastras. So this was the discussion among the students or disciples. And uh, it seems that this discussion, that such a discussion was going on among the disciples, reached the ears of Swami Parashara Bhattar also. So next day, when the, it so happened that as usual, when the great scholar was passing by and he came to <coughs> the discourse to pay respects to Parashara Bhattar, he said, oh Swami, yes. oh great scholar, welcome. Why don't you spend a few minutes with me here? And then he actually asked me, offered him a seat and then he just uh, started a conversation. 
then swami parashara but knowing as if he was no, not knowing he asked so i mean you have studied so many shastras they are an outstanding authority <coughs> with regard to all the texts of the all the six darshanas and also several other nastika darshanas etc i want to know according to your opinion which is the paratatva or which is the single established reality and this scholar said no oh, yeah the question is very good but according to sankhya philosophy it is like this according to vedanta philosophy it is like this there also the advaita philosophy states like this vishta advaita says says like that dvaita states like this then shaiva state have a different opinion then you have several other systems of philosophy which say it give their own explanations so it's a huge ocean and he gave very good uh, exposition of all the theories probably for one or one and half hours then swami parashara but asked him what is your verdict which do you think is the final among all these opinions then this scholar said see i am a scholar in all the systems of philosophy as such i don't have an individual or independent opinion because when you see this this seems to be correct when you see that that seems to be correct so how can we say this one thing is the exact this siddhanta or this is the final verdict i don't have any such uh, opinions so this is what i think about this then swami parajara but paid him respect and said very nice thank you we have been really enlightened and he sent it. and after some time that devout person who resembled a qualified beggar so because beggar should not be understood in you know, any derogatory term he came there and he once again he came there then swami parashara but prostrated before him and then he asked him a question today i want to ask a small question which is the paratatva as you know please let us know then the person got little offended he said what is this why are you asking me this question i have realized that lord narayana is a supreme being and <clears throat> though i have not read all the shastras i know that the purport of all the shastras is that narayana is supreme being and i firmly believe in that but since you know why are you asking me that question i thought you also firmly believed and that is why i was paying so much of respect to you don't you know then swami parashara but no i also know you know already but i wanted to know from you what is your firm belief now my firm i am firmly established in the belief that our narayana is supreme and since i think that you also believe in the same thing i i prostrate before you and i respect you and also accept your respects that is what he said then he said okay thank you very much you may kindly proceed then the shishyas to the shishyas or disciples he explained see in spite of reading all the shastras if you don't arrive at a conclusion that is convincing to yourself then what is the use of reading all the shastras so ultimately all the shastras focus towards saying that it is the supreme lord narayana who is the person who is mentioned or who is to be known by means of the shastras but sakala shastram galalum pirakkum gnanam swayam arjitam pole so how much ever you are in by yourself it may not be enough to sustain you whereas if you already have inherited money why don't you make use of that so <coughs> திருமந்திரத்தினால் 
So ultimately, that doesn't mean that shastras are to be derogated because many a times, what happens when people give discourses? They say, "Oh, these shastras are all useless." No, no, it's not like that. It means that shastras have their own utility, their own use, their own greatness. But for a person who wishes to attain the Lord himself directly, without putting in too much of efforts, this is the best method. So one should, because I have heard many people giving discourses saying, "Oh, these shastras are all useless." It's not like that. Even so, I'm an old mammy has never mentioned like that. So many a times, what happens when we say, when we try to show the greatness of something, we may show the other thing that is compar comparable in a little bit poor light. But that doesn't mean that we should have disrespect towards that. This is very important. <coughs> so it is Swayama Paitrika Dhanam Polet Tatvagnana Janakangala Nishutis Mritya Sakalasha Strangaladum Jetanarekip Irekum Gnanam Swayama Jita Dhanam Pole Atyaya Sadabhyama Irekum. So the knowledge that is given by means of the Shastras is to be attained by putting in huge amount of efforts. Acharya Padesham Adiyahat Tirimantrattal Tirekkum Jnanam Paitrakadhanam Pode Anayasalabhyama Irekkum Engai So this is acquired with great ease without putting too much of efforts. Ittal Shastrangalirka till that Sangrahamana Tirimantratta Kundana Vaibhavam Shurdita Iti. Therefore, for a person who has, <coughs> who wants to acquire the knowledge of the Supreme Lord directly, it is easier for him to do so by means of the Tirimantram. This is the meaning of this mantra. Then the eighth sutra is eight sutra is Bhagavan Mantrangaltan Ane Kangal. For this, a very beautiful introduction is given. Anal Shastrangal or in the or in the Dahirade Bhagavan Mantrantari Bhagavan Mantrantari Ton Nomane in Nayum Palavilayo Vingirashankaya. Mantra Antarangrika till Ither Kundana Vaipavate Arudichai Vada the Rul Nampati Bhagavan Mantrangaltan Ane Kangalian Girar Adavadi Astam Te Gunarashi with Punapari Vahat Manam Yamanam Sankhya. So very beautifully Swami Madhavada Mamuni Hill explains this sutra, which says. Bhagavan Mantrangaltan Ane Kangal. There are several, several, several mantras that actually lead us to the Supreme Lord. And then he is going to tell Adadam Vyapakangalinam, Avyapakangalinam, Mirande Vargam, Avyapakangalil, Vyapakangal Mundrum, Shresh Kangal. So he says there are two types, there are several, several mantras. For example, if you see the Upanishad, you have the Simhatapani mantra, which is the what is known as the Mantrodharakrama or extracting the mantra. So when the Nasimhatapani Upanishad is studied, after it is it is studied properly, it actually is the superset of the Nusimha Mantra. So when you actually pick out the particular letters of the mantra and arrange it in a particular order, you get the Nusimha Mantra. So like that, Bhagavan Mantra and Galtan in Mahabharata, several mantras are there. In Sanamayana, several mantras are there. In the Puranas, hundreds of mantras have been explained. Then you have a great work called Mantra Mahodaji, Mantra Arnava, etc. Which Mantra Mahodaji means ocean of mantras. Mantra Arnava means once again ocean of mantras. This is a separate work, though 
synonymous as far as the names are synonymous with each other they are to, two totally different mantras uh, totally different treatises which give list thousands of mantras that is why they are called as ocean of mantras um. So it is said, Bhagavan Mantram Galtam Anekam Gal Avedam Vyapakam Galinam Avyapakam Galinam Mirandi Vaggam In the next sutra he says, they are interrelated sutras, so I am narrating them together. So mantras are of two types, they can be categorized into two divisions. One is Vyapaka Mantras, another is Avyapaka Mantras. So, Avyapaka mantras means they are not universal, non universal mantras. Whereas Vyapaka mantras are universal mantras. So, what is meant by non universal mantras? So, you have several mantras like Sudarshana Maha Mantra, Narasimha Maha Mantra, Narasimha Mantra itself. There are hundreds of types of Narasimha Mantra. Sudarshana Mantra also, hundreds of mantras are there. Then Varaha Mantra is there, Vamana Mantra is there, Haigriva Mantra is there, Garuda Mantra is there. These are all famous mantras, but all these are Avyapaka Mantras. How about uh, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva? That is Vishnu Dwadashakshari, that is Vyapaka Mantra. It is called as the Vishnu Dwadashakshari. It's a very famous mantra. It's Vyapaka mantra. It's universal mantra. Anybody can chant them. As far as Avyapaka mantras are concerned, this is not, this information is not given in this work, but it, was, it is mentioned by my Acharya and people may be knowing about it. There are, they are divided into four depending upon the nature of the person. So it is called as Siddha, Susiddha, Sadhya and Dari. So there is a table which has to be put, it is called as Siddhari Koshtaka. Koshtaka means table. So Siddhari Koshtaka is, suppose I want to chant the Sudarshana Mantra. Am I eligible to do it? So it is based on my birth star, my Rashi and several other aspects. And then when I see in the table, there is a lookup table actually. It's a record. Look up table which is award thousands of years back. Which will say these mantras are Siddha. That means they are easily accomplishable. Then so Siddha is more very easily accomplishable. Or Sadhya accomplishable with great effort. And Ari means enemy. So if a person is instructed with a mantra that is enemy to his nature. If he chants that mantra, all bad things will happen to him. He may even lose his life if he does it in the way it has to be done. So Sudarshana mantra might be suitable to for some people, it may not be suitable. Narasimha mantra might be suitable for some people, it may not be suitable for some people. Because they are very, very powerful mantras. But once again, they have to be given or given as Upadesha by a person who is a Siddha who has accomplished, who has attained Siddhi in that mantra. And this person also has to put in necessary efforts. And in uh, India, we also listen to several inferior mantras that deal with inferior devatas. Like Pretan, Bhuta Ganamsha, Nyejan, Tetamasadhanaha. As Lord Krishna says, Yajante Sattvika Devan, Eksharaksham Si Rajasa, Pretam Bhuta Ganam Shamni, Yajante Tamasa. So, Tamasa, Tamasic people worship Pretas or the departed souls. Departed souls means not our even worship, we worship, everybody worships their departed souls, namely their forefathers. That's a different thing. But that's a big issue, I am not going to do that. So they worship Pretana, Bhuta Ganapshanya, are very, very, very inferior devatas or tamasic devatas, which will give them instant gratification, like it gives them great money and fame and all those things. 
but ultimately it will ruin their well being or the atman itself but we understand i have heard from some elderly people that there are several mantras that can be that with regard to siddhi can be attained even by chanting it once so i was uh, told by a person there is a karna pishaj mantra karna pishaj means a, a particular deity that comes and tells all the past events of a person who is present in the who is in front of us such mantras can be accomplished or siddhi can be attained in such mantras by chanting it even once so by that he will attain lot he may attain lot of fame and name etc but ultimately in the long run it will go in we have heard about several stories and i have seen a few people who have such accomplishments but otherwise their mind is in bad totally imbalanced and they have lot of problems so siddhi is siddhi except for bhagavad siddhi or bhagavad sakshatkara is totally prohibited though it is mentioned in detail in the shastras so tamasik mantras are there rajasik mantras are there then among the mantras of the lord vishnu itself there are several mantras these are all avyapaka mantras so among the vyapaka mantras are always better than avyapaka mantras that is ashtakira maha mantra varsha kira maha mantra daya charam shloka etc etc so these can be practiced universally by each and every person but the problem is you cannot attain siddhi so easily in these mantras but you it will never give you any harm and it will never be a waste you may not attain siddhi even if a person chants the ashtakira maha mantra 1 million times he may not attain siddhi in this way but it will never go waste and it will never do any detrimental thing to him that is why avyapakangalil vyapakangalil moondrum shreshthangal more than the avyapak mantras all the vyapak mantras are beneficial to us because they will never cause any harm to us but it is not mentioned in this context i am mentioning it what i have heard but these mantras will take a long 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 time to attain it but once you attain it the water is there to be done but if a person chants one million times and says i am not nothing good has occurred to me it's not so definitely it will have some good effect which we may not understand in this in this janma in this birth but it will be carried over to the next birth. so chanting a vyapaka mantra with faith will never 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 become a waste so that is why lord krishna says nahi kalyana kar kashchite durgatim tata gachchite if you have done something really wonderful without expecting in the return for my sake that is for the lord sake it will never be a waste so this is the literal meaning of this mantra now we see the commentary so bhagavan mantram galta anekam gal so i will explain this shloka next in the next class bahavo anrupa kalyan guna putrasya santite tavananta gunasya api chadeva prathame guna ha bahuni me vidita ni janmani tavata bina ennil ton pol karani nilnade indum enninayo niyamai piranda indum இத்தியாதிகளில் சொல்லுகிறபடியே பகவன் குணங்களும் குணபடி குணபரிவாரூபங்களுமான அவதாரங்களும் அசங்கியாதமாயிருக்குமா போதே அவத்தை அனுபந்தித்திருக்கும் மந்திர விசேஷங்களும் அனந்தாவை பகவன் மந்திராக என்கிறபடியே அநேகங்களாயிருக்கும் வெரி வெரி பியூட்டிஃபுல் அனாலஜி வெரி விசேஷ் Since you are all well-versed in Bhagavad Gita, I will not go into the detail. 
So in the fourth chapter, it's a very interesting thing. The beginning of the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Imam Vivaswate Yogam Proktava Mahamami Vivaswan Maname Praha Manuriksha I taught this mantra to this yoga to Surya or the sun god. He taught it to Manu and then Manu taught it to Ikshvaku. But later it got diluted or it got almost lost. Now I have given that yoga to you. Then Arjuna is surprised because according to the story of Mahabharata and Bhagavata, Krishna and Arjuna are cousins. So in Sanskrit, you don't, in English, you don't have any words to describe these unique relationships. That is, father, sister, son, and so um, Arjuna's father is Vasudeva, his sister is Kunti, and his son is Krishna. And Krishna's maternal uncle's son is Arjuna. This the relationship between this, these type of cousins. So in Sanskrit, even in English, you call all of these as cousins only. You say maternal cousin, paternal cousin, something like that. But in English, in Indian languages, you have specific, specific words to denote each of these relationships. Because even father's uh, brother is called uncle. Mother's brother is also called uncle. <laughs> but in, in Indian parlance, it is not so. So, it is very beautifully mentioned in the Mahabharata that when Krishna, when he used to visit the Panchapandavas, he used to prostrate before Dharmaraja, Yudhishthira and Bhima because they both were elder to him. And Nakula and Sahadeva used to prostrate to Krishna because Krishna was elder to both of them. Whereas Arjuna and he were equal in age, so Arjuna would come and embrace Krishna. Of course, here he prostrates before him and he realizes that he is God incarnate. But as far as the etiquette is concerned, Krishna used to prostrate to Arjuna, Bhima and Yudhishthira or Dharmaraja because they were elder to him, then embrace Arjuna and then Nakula and Sadeva would come and prostrate to Krishna. <coughs> so, this is how it was. So then Arjuna asked, what is this? How can you, see, you say you, you taught this mantra to uh, the sun god? Aparam bhavato janma param janma vivasvataha kathame tad vijaniyam kimado proktamado proktamaniti. What is it? Confusing me. The sun god was born several million years ago. And you were born three months earlier to me. I know you from your childhood. In, in this uh, in the village language, we say, he is my chaddi dos. I was seeing you when you were wearing shorts. <laughs> that means I have seen you from very, very, very engaged. So how do I, uh, why are you confusing me by saying, I, I told it to some guy. Then Krishna explains in detail, Bahavo, Mahoni Nevyati, Tani Janmani, Tavacharjuna. Both of us have encountered or uh, we have taken millions of births. But the difference between you and me is I remember all my births, whereas you remember not even one of your births. <laughs> so just as the Krishna Avatara is the most, most, most exalted birth. So we don't call it birth, that's why we call it as an appearance or avatar. Among all the millions of births that the Lord himself, the incarnations he has taken. Similarly, this Ashtakshara Mahamantra is the best among all the millions of mantras. Why I am mentioning million is several of the mantras might have become extinct now. And in future also they may come into existence. Some rishis may come and see it. <coughs> so, he says like that and then continues. Avayallam <coughs> tane 
அவையெல்லாம் தானே கவர்க்கமோ என்னகரி அவைதான் வியாபகங்கள் என்னும் அவ்வியாபகங்கள் என்னும் இரண்டு வர்க்கம் என்கிறார் அதாவது சர்வ வியாபகமான பகவத் ஸ்வரூபத்தை பிரதிபாதிக்கையாலே வியாபகங்கள் என்னும் பகவத் அவதார குணசேஷ்டங்களில் ஓர் உண்மை பிரதிப பிரதிபாதிக்கையாலே அவ்வியாபகங்கள் என்னும் உபய வர்க்கமாயிருக்கை one explanation that i gave was given by my acharya which is not mentioned in this context here swami manavad mauni says why they are called as these are called as vyapaka and the others are called avyapakas they are called avyapakas because they refer to some unique or particular aspect of the supreme lord whereas the vyapaka mantras refer to the original nature of the supreme lord himself this is how they are known as vyapaka and avyapaka so banan mamni does not go to venture this is the ari and all those things because his focus is on tirumantram and his, his explanation but i mentioned this information because i thought it would, it would be appropriate for people to know because my acharya used to mention this in the context of mantras so with this what say conclude today's uh, presentation i think we have some questions so one question uh govinda jari swami can i read your question aloud do i have no no problem no problem swami yes. no problem swami i had some uh, problems typing them up because i am joining from the phone so sometimes no problem, it, no problem. It, So I am discontinued. Not interested in Siddhis of the Vyapaka Mantra, sir. We isn't it that the goal of the mantra is that one can enter your Bhagwan Mantra. Where can we find this information of which mantras are good for persons? So, of course, but sometimes, so it is mentioned that in the Trimangi Arvars, Periya uh, Tirubodi. Uh, He says, "Kulam tarum shalvam tandiru." So these vyapaka mantras can give all fruits. So suppose a person chants the Shtakshra Maha Mantra with the aim of earning money or prosperity, then it will give that also. Though it is not prescribed for that purpose. if it can give the highest possible goal then why why not it will not give the lower goals provided it is constructed so if you want a person to be killed and you do this it may, it may not give that type of effect but if you want to earn pro- material prosperity definitely it will happen but once again it is like using the huge uh, great uh, uh, thing for a small very ordinary purpose so it is not uh, encouraged if somebody does it fine but using a huge uh, it's like having 10 million dollars and uh, smoking a small cigarette <laughs> to attain pleasure uh, people will not do it if a person realizes its value he will not do it where can we find this information of which mantras are good for persons according to jnana rashi that is mentioned in the mantra ratnam avaraji and mantra mantra arnava etc uh, exactly where this uh, table is available in which form i don't know because my acharya had shown that how it is there so you you may find out if you are really interested then i will also tell you that with respect to ekarshi the best standard is no food whatsoever however we see that many shivas are stone fast on this day some just don't eat rice eat rice and even say that one can even take broken rice dishes and they eat everything else on this day for those who do not fast from the ground what is it? see this is one, one very important thing is this ekarshi upasa is the main purpose of upavasa Upasamipe vasa ha upavasa. The main purpose of Ekadashi is to meditate upon the Lord by all means. So, suppose I am engrossed in a very, very 
uh, what uh, attractive film, for example. Suppose your parents or your wife or a husband comes and offers, hey, already it is late, why are you not taking? No, no, don't disturb me now. I am not interested in food today, I am interested, I want to see this film or if some football game is there, you can easily relate it to that or some very World Cup final football is going on or some uh, cricket uh, World Cup final is going on and uh, the match is very evenly poised. Uh, no, 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 I am not interested in food. Or even if somebody, some business comes, no, no, I am not taking any business talks, no. Even if it is millions of dollars they give me. So the spirit of Ekadashi is, it is known as Haridina. The external atmosphere also is very good for meditating upon the Lord. So Upavasa necessarily means being closer, closer, closer and closest to the Lord. And in that process, food is given second, second uh, preference or no preference. This is one thing. Second thing is, as far as the Yoga Shastra is concerned, if you, are, if you overeat, you will not be able to concentrate. So it is very important that balanced food is taken. Especially on Ekadashi, from the point of view of health also, you have to give rest to your uh, digestive organs. So one day if you fast in a fortnight, it is excellent. Nowadays, even Western doctors accept, they never accepted the uh, greatness or uniqueness of fasting. Now they are also saying, I, I hear from some journals that fasting is very good. So India has a very unique tradition of fasting, which all of you can practice. So it, is, it might be very difficult to fast for an entire day. So what they say is, they do it for half a day in the beginning. So they don't fast for the entire day and have food in the evening. Some people have food in the morning and fast in the evening. Or have very little food. Some people don't have cooked food, they eat some fruits. Some people have only milk or something. Some people have only water. Some people do not do that also if they are capable of doing that. So that also should be done gradually. If you have asked how much we have to accept or what it is, it depends upon your inspiration, how inspired you are, how your body can sustain that. So, and uh, earlier my guru used to tell uh, in the instance of Shravana Dvadashi. Suppose the star, Shravana stars falls on a Dvadashi day. It is known as Shravana Dvadashi. You have to fast to, for two days continuously. And he used to do it without water also. That is why he is Hale and healthy at the age of 98. And people would actually, his, uh, when he was young in his 20s and 30s, people would say, no, no, you have, without our knowledge, secretly you have consumed some fruits or something. No. He used to challenge them and show that without consuming even a drop of water, he could sustain himself for two days. So that is the ideal situation, but it is, from the point of view of Ayurveda, it is very good to fast for one day in a fortnight where you don't consume any food at all or little food. If uh, you find, if you are craving for food and uh, you force yourself to not to consume, that's not acceptable. So you consume in lesser and lesser quantity and then you come to no, no, uh, no food at all. You may consume some liquid like milk or something, then that also is possible, you, uh, you consume water. Then you stop Nirjala Upavasa, we call it. That is to be done. But the thing is on Dwadashi early morning, as soon as the sunrise happens, you are supposed to do Parana. On that day, you are not supposed to use chilies and other things because that will damage your digestive system. So that day, you are supposed to use only uh, pepper and other things. So the, the food tradition is a beautiful tradition which is like an ocean in itself. So that is how it is. And uh, like you said, the rice for South Indian wheat. As, as I was just thinking for English people, potatoes are like stable. 
course, potato is uh, it's full of vayu. So the more you avoid it, it is better for your health. And uh, if you have the table Keshav Das for me, you please send me. I am interested because I don't have it right uh, right away with me. Please share it on your, on my email. So any other uh, quick questions? So Swami, you were talking about uh, taking upadesha of a, of a mantra, acharya upadesha of a, of a mantra. So does upadesha of a mantra have to include also the mantra, the, the meaning of the mantra also, or not? Can the meaning come through the Chaitya Guru or should it come through performing Purisharana or does it have to come from lear being learned from an external Acharya? It did not necessarily come from an external Acharya. In the case of Ramananda Acharya, we hear that to uh, receive the mantra, he went to the Goshti Purna or uh, Trikoti Udnambi. It is not necessary that you have to have two Acharyas, but as far as mantras are concerned, though the meaning is of utmost value, it is the sound value that matters most than anything. So for that matter, even if you don't know the meaning, uh, exact meaning or the inside, inherent meanings, even chanting the mantra itself will suffice to attain the results. But if you know the mantra, it will give you more respect towards the mantra and also towards the things that can be accomplished. So it's all the more meaningful. But in the beginning, probably when the, for example, the Gayatri Mantra, it is started at the age of, uh, before the Bhai attains eight, how will he be able to grasp the meaning? So it's the sound value that is most important. So if he knows the meaning, it's an added advantage, but even without knowing the meaning, you can, it is the best to chant it. So chanting is of most importance rather than knowing the meaning. Knowing the meaning is an advantage. Added advantage which will give the Siddhi earlier than otherwise. Yeah, so I think even the study of Mamukshapati, especially this Chira Mantra Prakarnam, uh, I mean, it, it, obviously we are studying the meaning of the, of the Chira Mantra here. So yes. it, it is recommended, yes, so it's recommended to, to not to, to study the meaning also. You know, it is recommended to study, but not in uh, mandatory. But what happens is, along, along with the meaning of the mantra, so many other nuances are explained here. Like the personal conduct of a Shiva, Ishnava, etc. On the premise of, I mean, in the context of uh, having this as the premise, so many things are explained. That is why Rahasitra Karakshepa has to be done. So uh, you cannot explain some philosophy without any base. So this is the base on which the Shivaishnava philosophy is explained. The, Sampa, the Sampradaya philosophy, not the Shastra philosophy. So uh, my other question uh, has to do with something we talked about a long time ago. You were explaining about how <clears throat> Bhagavad Visham is a very important Shastra. It's a commentary on the Nalaya Divya Prabandham, the uh, 4,000 prayers of the, uh, of the Alwaris in Tamil. Um, uh, specifically, for, can you say something for, for those persons who are not Tamil speakers, who don't understand Tamil perhaps, they're not, can you, un can you explain the importance of Bhagavad Visham? Because uh, in order to, enthuse people to want to study Bhagavad Gita. So the, <clears throat> I will give a very mundane example. Now if uh, somebody loves tennis, they will listen to the interview of uh, Roger Federer or uh, earlier John McEnroe or Brian Barge or somebody. Why do they listen to the interview of those people? Because they love tennis and they want to know the experiences of people who have played tennis at the highest level. So if Namadwar is our model, we have to know what are the experiences he has undergone. Only then we will be inspired to take up the Bhakti Marga. So if uh, Roger Federer says I earned uh, uh, 100 million dollars by playing tennis, then people are inspired. I also want to do, I also want to do. Of course, out of 100, uh, 10 people may become champions or they may earn at least $10 million. 
So you always want to listen to the experience of an accomplished person in that field. Similarly, who is the highest accomplished person in that field? It is Swami Namahwa. And he has poured out all his experiences in a very, very, very unique manner. And to understand those experiences, we need interpretations. And those interpretations are the commentaries on the Divya Prabhupada, especially in the Mahalas. So unless you listen to the commentaries, how will you understand what is the experience of a divine person who has had the vision of the Supreme Lord and who is eligible who attained moksha? So you have to listen to their experiences, which is interpreted properly. So uh, now I can understand or you can understand what Roger Federer speaks. But how do you understand the import of the poems of Namalwar unless it is explained by somebody? Even though they may not know the language. So to get inspiration to proceed further in the Vaishnava path, you need to understand the experiences of the Alvar, Sacharyas, Alvars like the Malvar, who is the premier most Alvar. That is why his Muni has the maximum number of commentaries. Other Divya Prabandhas, the other 3000 and odd have only one or two commentaries maximum. Whereas the Malvars has five commentaries. And still new commentaries are coming even today, like the Bhagavad Gita. So if you have to know the model Sri Vaishnava, that is why we call him as Prapannajana Kutastha. He is the model or he is the first among all the Prapannas. So unless you know his experiences, you will not be able to really relish what you are going to get. Or you will not be able to even uh, imagine what are the fruits that you are going to get. Therefore, it is very, very important to learn through the commentaries of our Acharyas what the experience of the greatest among the Prapannas was. This can be explained in great detail, but this is in a nutshell the answer to your question. Right. So, uh, but what I've seen in practica and practically I've seen in India, for instance, in North India, the tendency is to read Ramcharit Manas because it is in Hindi. In in Tamil Nadu, they read Kamba Ramayana because it is in Tamil. Definitely. So. So definitely people have an affinity for learning. This is why I wanted to organize some lectures in English for people who are not speakers of Indian languages. Um, it's a very commendable thing. It will, it will give them new dimensions about the field of devotion or bhakti and the experiences of the Supreme Lord. Right. So, what, so I do, I do, I appreciate, I appreciate the exalted status of Namalwa. But yes. I'm, I'm trying to encourage people to, to, to get into yes, it. See, unless you taste sugar, you will not know what it is, sweetness. Even if it is explained to by 100 people in, in uh, taking hundreds of hours. So they should just go and experience by putting the sugar in their mouth. Similarly, unless they experience the uniqueness and beauty of the experience of, of Namalva, they will not be able to do that. So directly they should enter into the experience. That's all I would like to say in this context. So thank you very much. I end with the English Toka. <coughs> Punyam bojavikasaya papatvan takshayaita, Shimana virabhut bumo rama rajadiva karaha, Vini kritavirin chadi dinam kushe bhutayaha, Rama mujapadam bojasamashtena shalinaha. <coughs>